Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving me uh, your time. Uh, I have to start by asking, and I think I might have asked you this before. We've spoken about this film, yeah. Oh, and it, well, I was going to jump into something else pr oh. prior to the film, which is for both of you, uh, you have both been able to do such a variety of roles in different genres, so what is it like winning the actor's lottery? Um, uh, I don't know. Well, you know what's really nice? Watching Kristen's crib, right back <laughs> from Panic Room and Sils Marie and um, uh, Still Alice, all those things, it's like, she's fucking so good. And like getting a chance to, to do scenes with her in this and just watch how she works and um, how smart she is and what a grasp of fucking English language she has. Um, and how to describe feelings and, and uh, quantify it all and then, and then display it and put it um, on display in a very raw, honest way. It's, it's really inspiring, so I had a nice time on this job. It's, um, it's cool. There you go. Uh. <laughs> yeah, like I think, like um, if you were to epitomize like the actors' lottery, it would definitely be like who you get to hang out with when you, when you're like sort of called upon to elicit a reaction. When you're like called upon by a feeling or a story or like a character, a subject to go, oh, I wanna, I wanna help facilitate that. Um, you always find yourself with like-minded people, and um, uh, so in this case, like we found on on this movie, we were like. You have desires and goals, and they were ultimately achieved on this. Like, you always want to feel safe, and you always want to feel inspired and pushed by someone, and, and like, uh, not uncomfortable, but sort of put in a place where you feel out of control um, and inspired. So, yeah, it was, it was lottery-esque. Uh, one of the things that I found talking over the years to many different actors is each person has a different process, the way they like to be on set. Some like music, some like silence. Um, how do you both like to typically work on a set, and how was it working together? Did you have a very similar style? We, I think we both have a fairly like stand and deliver style. I, I mean, like initially we talked a lot and like like conceptualized whatever, but I think at the end of the day we both like to throw that out and just sort of like be present. Um, I don't listen to music to try and take myself out of the environment in order to. Um, accomplish like achieving this emotion um but if music's playing on set and we're listening to it together love that it can be really like you know transcendent to listen to a certain song and feel the same thing at the same time um but i don't i don't sit with headphones and like lock myself out so i can do the scene i want to find my way in yeah i'd agree with that M music was a big part in this Drake made a playlist and had some some of the songs that were ended up in the film already available for us on set so that you know what I really like about the, the having music on set is it creates an atmosphere, but it also step, makes you feel self, less self-conscious in a way. Mm -hmm. So people can't. It's really not like it's not like there's like silence of people being able to hear like yeah you breathe or whatever you say or mutter or whatever it is. So you kind of makes you feel as though uh, yeah it gives you a little bit of a security blanket. Yeah. One of the things about this film is there's a lot of close-ups, and I'm curious if how is it when you're acting? Do you with the close-up, and there's so many of them, are you even more conscious of where the camera is, or does it not matter to you where the camera's located because you're just in the scene? I try not to think about it whenever, whenever I act in anything. Kind of forget about the camera occasionally, and then people come up and they're like, hey, so you know this is a big white, so we need this and whatever, and you'll be like, oh, okay. But um, Good this, the way that John works as a DP as well is, is very fluid, and he has an easy rig on, and then he kind of floats around and finds it depending on what you're doing because a lot of it isn't necessarily blocked out. Um, so then it becomes kind of a dance, but he, he, had a, he had a great energy about him whereby you wouldn't even sense his presence in many ways, so then you don't even think about what the shot is. You, you just about. trust that he'll be there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but usually, like, I, I'm so obsessed with the process of making movies that I'm curious because it's fun for me. I'm always like, well, wait, how are we seeing this? From, you know, from what perspective? Like, how, how are you getting... How are you getting inside of this? Are you outside of this? Like, because it sometimes affects how you play something. And then when you work with a DP that is so um, a part of the scene that you're doing and, and uh, like so aware of you, that f falls away a little bit. But I don't think it's bad to sort of like practically, technically approach a scene. It's not like I'm less in my character. Or it's, I'm not like less invested or like entrenched in a moment. I really like f servicing a shot 
Like if I know where I'm being seen from, that's where, I mean, that's where I'll direct. I, it's not like playing to something, but like I'll throw my energy. If I'm going to throw it somewhere, I'll throw it there. And it's good to know that you're there because if I throw it across the room in the other direction, you'll miss it. Um, so I, yeah. I am, I, by the way, I appreciate you guys talking about the craft because sometimes I'll, you know, it, I appreciate it. Uh, I've watched a number of actors on set, like a Woody Harrelson, who will mix it up on every take, mm -hmm. and it's never the same. Uh, and then I've watched other people that uh, really want to, you know, they know what they want to do in the scene, and they're and that's what they're going to do even on take eight. And unless the director gives them some direct, you know, says we got to do it a different way. Um, for both of you, in general, do you like to experiment the way Woody likes to do it, where every take is a little different, or? Do you sort of talk to the director beforehand and sort of, do you know what I mean? Like, how do you typically like to do something like that? I would love to be able to switch it up every single time. <laughs> and if, if given like a different input, then can, but I find it very difficult to just do that on my own. And no, it's different on this film, but a lot of the time on film you, you do the scene and then they'll be like, well, we need to do it again because this wasn't right or this wasn't right. And then you're like, well, I'll do it like that again because that is, in theory, what I felt and what the scene was on a basic, real level. So then you can sometimes run out of time to play with it, but it's, mm. it's then there's something... Yeah, Logistics when, step in to yeah. that, yeah. It's, but what, yeah, it's wonderful when you have the time and someone says, hey, like, to completely flip it on its head or whatever it might be, and then you go, oh yeah, then you do it, you go, wow, that feels completely right, and I was wrong where I was at with it, and I, yeah. Like, but at the same time, I can say, like, having worked together, there are some actors that are uh, prepared in a way that they genuine even if he thinks he's going for the same thing every time it comes out differently every time and it feels like new because it's a new discovery of something there are some actors that are like more theatrical that actually do the same thing every time so perfectly it's like are you a socio like it's all honestly <laughs> trips me out um so like yeah i don't think we're i don't think either of us are like i think Woody's like such a he does like improv -y, funny, yeah. like, you know, gives people a million options. With this, it was just about like making sure that that feeling was genuine every time and whether or not they were the same. They were probably different, but the, the goal was always that it, that centered emotional it. Let, let's jump into the film a little bit. Um, when you guys think back on the making of the film, which is at least a little bit ago now. That's crazy. You said in that interview two years ago. Yeah. I didn't think it was that long ago. Yeah, yeah I, I can recall talking to him at least a few times mm -hmm. over the course of these two, three years of talking, let's talk about equals. Now I can finally actually talk about it. <laughs> um, when you think back on the making of the film, is there a day or two that you're always going to remember uh, like during the production? Oh, I have so many, many memories. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, the most vivid memories of any job I've ever done on this. Certainly. But then, like, thinking back, I was just sitting and we were having lunch and I was just sitting in the hotel room and I was like, there's part of me that, like, cherishes it for exactly what it was, but also I sit there I was like, damn, I wish I could do it all again now. Yeah. It's always the feeling I get for any job. It's so annoying. Yeah. You, because you become, you become a not, it, you don't become more skilled, but you become, you become a better actor because you just become, like, uh, uh, more familiar with yourself and, like, more, it's not confident, but, like, I don't know, more well versed in expression or something or just older and like 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 have more experiences to draw from and then you're like I, I want to repeat every job after I finish it I was like oh, I could do that better now that I've done it you just do it like three times yeah. and then the third version will be the best one like, yeah if someone said to me right now they're like you can start shooting this again tomorrow but I'll, okay I'm in this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um I don't know where you guys live but you filmed this in Tokyo and I believe Singapore where we both live Exactly. <laughs> so, um, what I'm curious about is, do you find when you're on location like this that it is easier to dive into a character because you're in unfamiliar surroundings, or do you typically like to be closer to home and like sleep in your own bed when doing a role, or do you think that, do you know what I mean? Like that location sometimes I guess brings to the performance. I find it easy to be on location. Me too. I find it much easier to be away from everything that I know, and then that gives you an ability to kind of disappear a bit more. And I kind of fall off the grid whenever I'm working anyway, but particularly if you're away from home, there's very few intrusive things coming into it. Like even as like coming home and getting like mail, yeah, <laughs> you don't have that. So you don't have to sit there and be like, oh, I've got to do this and that. You can just fully live in that environment with those people. Oh, I'm curious about what it was like filming in Tokyo because for me, I've never been, but everyone I speak to says it's like visiting another planet, like a, a totally different society than what we're used to uh, in you know America. Um, how would you describe what it was like over there? And is there a place or a day that you'll always remember from uh, being over there? 
Um, we started the movie with this really ceremonial gonging thing. What was that <laughs> called? <laughs> we were blessed by someone. Um, blessed by monks in a yeah. temple. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they were not monks. There was a gonging thing. <laughs> they were monks. They were monks, right? Um, yeah, so we, they gonged and it was like uh, really was moving. Chanting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris and Yeah, Chris and Yeah, It was really weird. The Drake was the best one, actually. Yeah, the Drake was the first one. There was all this chanting, and we didn't understand any of it. And then suddenly we heard like, Dre, Do, Re, Ma. We both looked at each other and were like, what's that? And then you had to that. go up and like put a plant down and clap. And they do it for every film in Japan, I think. They kind of bless the movie yeah. before we start, which was nice. It was a, it was a, it was a nice, um, n bonding's not the right word. It just put us together. We were all like, yes. We are doing this now. Like, yeah. What I like about Drake's work is he, he knows how to get to the emotional core of scenes. And he's really good with characters. Um, talk a little bit about collaborating with him on your characters and maybe what was in the script versus what you felt and maybe how that changed a little bit based on your input, if at all. Sorry, if you want. <laughs> uh, I asked a five-part question, and I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I can't remember any of it. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Talk yeah. about Drake. Uh, sure. Ba uh, basically, uh, yeah, his approach is wonderful in the sense that there's no, there, there's no, there's a, there's a, there's a map or a guidebook, but then there's no set points that you have to hit within that. So you can kind of um, figure it out as you go along. Um, and he's the most passionate and encouraging person in terms of being free and being honest and and. Um, just being very present in the moment it creates a wonderful environment to work in. Um, and then in terms of the, the script, this is the first time for him working on a script, so when, when the characters were meant to be in their equal state, then we stuck to the script, and then when they were in their switched-on syndrome kind of feeling emotive uh, uh, state, then, then, then we were allowed to improvise, which then you know, became long takes, and, and Drake kind of giving you an idea of what he was aiming for, or coming in whispering occasionally about a thought, or... Uh, an idea to run with, but then apart from that, it was just kind of, you know, 30 minutes of, of whatever you felt that might be at, at that time. Yeah, like, um, I usually don't like rehearsal because I don't want to feel something before it's captured on film because it's a waste and I never want to, like, repeat it. And we had a week of rehearsal that I knew just based on watching his movies that were going to be something other than what I was used to dubbing rehearsal. Like, um, you can just tell by watching his movies that they're discovered and, and they're precarious. Like, they fall upon uh, their points. They don't dictate them. They don't, like, like, force them on you. You can tell that there was, like, some intention and some feeling that they had to go find out why they had and then they made a movie and by the end of that we could all sort of, like, take that experience with them. Um, so then in doing this it was, like, breaking down of... Uh, you know, uh, barriers and like walls and things that sort of uh, cut you off from really like being in a moment. And he was really good at it simply because he wanted it, simply because he's truthful when he asks you to be truthful. And you're just like, okay, I will do that. <laughs> like, sure. Yeah, it's really not like a complicated, it's not like some theory behind, it's just literally if the intention and the desire is there and it's true, it's contagious. Sure. My uh, last question for you guys. Uh, I saw a bunch of footage from Billy Lynn at CinemaCon, cool. and it looks incredible. Mm -hmm. It's uh, stunning, especially with the way the variable frame rate that Aang's doing. Was it projected in the right way? I didn't. It wasn't projected in. 4K, it, okay, is it? No, it's a uh, six. Well, I think the, yeah. the 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 war scenes I think are going to be in 120 frames per second. Okay. So it's going to look super vivid, like you're in the moment. And then there's going to be other times where it's just regular projection. And I could be wrong, but I think that's what's happening. No, it's, it's like an insanely high frame rate. But usually when you... An, an insanely high frame rate would give you like a slow motion effect, but if you put it in real time, you're just getting more information than you've ever gotten sure. than what we're used to. But usually like if you do that without whatever process he's doing, which I have no idea, it makes it look like reality TV. It does something to it. It, crisp, it makes it crisp in a way that actually detaches you. Yes. He messes with depth of field and makes this like 3D situation where it actually... Usually, the way a lens works, you control what, where the focal point is. In this case, everything's in focus, right? Like yeah. you can, it's like we're sitting here now, you're in focus, the camera's not. But right now, the camera's in focus. Okay, now that's in focus. So when you watch the movie, you can decide, almost as if you're there in person, 
what you want to look at, which has just never been seen before on film. The uh, Speed yeah. Racer, the Wachowski film, one of the reasons it put people off is because everything was in fr everything in focus right. in the frame, and it was like a live action cartoon. Right. But with Billy Lynn, it's trying to make, from what I understand, he's trying to make it that you're really there in the war, yeah. feeling what's going on, and wow. it just looks incredible. Is it true that he wanted to fire real live ammunition? I don't know. From someone. I mean, probably. <laughs> and they were like, we can't do that. No. <laughs> well, what, I, what I wanted to know of getting specifically is, what was it like? Have you seen the film? Um, what, Not what? even a friend. No, so you've seen more than me. Like, I've, I've done some ADR. I'm really curious to know, because I was constantly asking, like, what is this going to look like? Because you have two cameras that look really unfamiliar to me, and I'm obsessed with making movies, and I'm, like, totally out of my element right now. I have an actor who's never done a movie before being like, is this normal? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I genuinely have no idea what's going on, um, so I, I can't wait to see it. He, then the way Aang described it was that he feels so disconnected from movies that he watches that he just wants to feel like he's closer and that he's done this with this, like he's somehow achieved that. So I'm like, can't wait to see it. Can I wait? Um, I, I definitely have to ask you though, uh, you have just played J.D. Salinger recently, so what the hell was that like and what can you tease people about it? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it was terrifying. I mean, it felt, it felt like a big responsibility um, as a fan of his and, and then no, like learning about his life. I, you know, I felt um, I just wanted to do him, him justice and, and everything that he experienced. It's, it's intriguing. I didn't know, you know, because he was a very private person, not much is known about his life. And um, Danny wrote a, a, a great script which delves into everything he kind of experienced, I think, and kind of about how that made him able to create such wonderful writing. Yeah, I, I'm very uh, excited to see people's take on him. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but anyway, personally. Thank you so much. Let me